Mike, no surprise that you all used n most players in any season last year. The NFL owners made the change uh, limiting uh, the re return from IR to eight instead of unlimited as you had last year. Uh, does that maybe put, uh, and they expanded the number of games before you return from three to four. How much tougher does that maybe, you know, once you get into the season, uh, decisions when it comes to health and, you know, you always put a priority on staying healthy, but with the tightened rules on, I, on IR return, does that make it even more important to be as healthy as possible this year? Well, they're not our rules. They're just the NFL rules, and we try to follow them the best that we can. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, let's see how many guys are going to be out for an extended period of time. We'll have to manage the roster um, like we do every year. That's going to be uh, important. Mike, Caleb was saying how he feels mentally stronger than ever. How, how does that show up um, on a regular basis inside the building? Uh, yeah, I think that's about the only place that it can right now with the, you know, the work that he's doing, you know, just because he really hasn't been tested. Um, but what we're, we're, he's, I think, just really ahead of where he was, obviously, last year mentally, um, which is a great sign. Is that he's taking the time in the off season, you know, he was ready to go before we started installing. He wanted an iPad. He's working on his rehab. You know, he was focusing on on things that he could do uh, while he was rehabbing, and that that translated to to a good understanding, of, a very strong understanding of what we're going to be doing. Um, he's been able to get some work in, um, as you guys can see. That's been limited, but you know, that's all we ask him to do is you know focus on the things that they can do. See, you'll be at the mini camp next week. What, what do you, what's left, or what do you want? What are you going to do next week that maybe you hadn't done yet? I guess you'll find out next week, Jimmy. What, what, what have you liked about what you've seen so far, and what needs to improve? Well, I, mean, I think we're trying to get into some conditioning. I think there's, you know, been some, some, some days with some heat. Um, you know, we saw us move down here into the red zone, the high red, uh, which is critical. Um, you know that we. You know, play well on both sides of the football in that area, but we, will, you know, we'll continue to move down into the red zone. Um, always leery of of that and and the speed because the, the distance is, you know, the space is decreased. So without pads on, it's, you know, it's critical that that we're we're smart, you know, but also introducing those those low red concepts on offense and defense. Some picks of uh, of Jeffrey Simmons at the the Von Miller camp. You like guys going to you know various individual camps like this, whether it's tight end, whether it's defensive line, or so forth. You appreciate what they they can gain from those kind of things. Or? I don't know. I haven't been to them, so I wouldn't know what they could gain or what they do. Woodside has had a lot of game reps other than preseason and all. What are some of the things that he's done that's kind of earned your trust and his teammates' trust? Well, he prepares. You know, prepares as the starter. He hasn't had to. Um, but he's got great command of our offense. You know, I think that continues to show. Um, I think his leadership has improved. His ability to get guys, you know, lined up, hold them accountable. Um, you know, but it's di you know it's different, and we're going to have to give those guys opportunity to compete. Um, you know, in a training camp and, and, and every opportunity that we can here in practice when we, you know, scrimmage. But his his understanding of what we're doing, the details of the play, the progression, uh, getting us in the right protections. You know, that's all been, been really, really positive. Rob Moore said today that Traylon's been dealing with a setback from asthma. How confident are you that Traylon will get that worked out and be ready to go for the start of the training camp in the preseason? Yeah, very confident. You know, I mean, that's we got a lot of confidence in, in all our players to prepare. And, uh, you know, we got a few weeks, you know, quite a few weeks here before we do go to training camp. Are you surprised by that? Surprised by what? I don't get, I try not to get too surprised, but I mean, I'm sure you guys will disagree, that, but. The asthma setback with trailer. No, and that's not, you know, I mean, we, we, we deal with a lot of different things. He just, um, you know, that's something a lot of guys deal with. Again, we've, we've touched on this. practice today. Is there a specific reason for that? And how do you feel about your first round pick not being out of practice today? He was unavailable. I assume, I, did you guys know that he had asthma? Is that something that's covered? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a long medical history, yeah. Anything else? It, um, Garrett, ask Garrett, did you know a little bit about him, you know, through through Ohio State ties or anything like that? Or? No, I mean, obviously, I, you know, watch him when I can, but we got, we got business to do here. I uh, didn't, 
you know, been a while since we recruited them. Spent time with him, some good time with him um, at the pro day. Understand the program that he's come from, and you know he's you know, the group of young defensive linemen is is, is um, you know positive. And and I mentioned they're all kind of different, right? They all kind of not only look different, they got a different skill set, um, and so excited to see what those guys can do uh, and the role that they can develop when training camp comes. Mike, when you have a guy like Chig who. Uh kind of has all the physical tools but maybe needs to obviously find him in the offense. What's the challenge in a tight end position where he can do some things like seven on seven and run routes, but you also need him to block and do all the things on the line that you can't be all that physical right now? And how's he coming along with that? Well, I mean, I think he's doing everything that we're asking him to do. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to, to get some of those reps that you're going to need against another body without pads on. Uh, but we're also going to have to, you know, do a good job and be creative in, in how he you know, does block and where we put him. I mean, it's just it's not going to hold up against a 280-pound defensive end that, you know, that's that wouldn't be fair. So hopefully we can, can continue to, to find ways to, to have him be in there and help us uh, when we do run the football and then and do some of the things that, that his natural skill set would um, lend him to be able to do when we throw the football, which, you know, is, is showing up more and more to win the right tackle job. Do you want him to win this right tackle job? Yeah, I mean, I want every player um, that's competing for something to get it. I mean, he's worked hard. He's put a lot of time in, and he knows that he's going to have to go to training camp and, and earn a spot like like most everybody else. I mean, you know, obviously there are some spots here that, you know, you'd, you'd feel pretty good about. But, um, you know, Dylan is excited about competing. He hasn't, uh, you know, shied away from it. He's worked hard. Um, so looking looking forward to a to a great training camp with him. Mike, how do you view the spring in terms of you know the, I guess the balance of installing stuff and specifics, but also versus you know, culture getting in shape, things like that. Like compared maybe even to other teams, or even how you did it as a player. What's your overall I guess philosophy on on the the goal of the spring? Well, it's improvement, it's development. Um, We'd asked every player and coach to be willing to make a connection uh, with their with their teammates and with the coaching staff, understanding that you know not everybody's going to be best friends. You're going to have a different relationship with with some others than you will, um, you know, some some guys. And but just be willing during this time of the year to to create those you know, connections, uh, be willing to learn, um, be willing to improve. And um, you know, I think for the rookies, it, I kind of noticed some of this install kind of gets to be a lot. So we've you know, that's why you see some of the, the two spot stuff is where those guys can can focus on maybe some of the base stuff and and allow them to develop. I think that there was, you know, once you get into six and seven installs, uh, I started to see, you know, a little bit of regression uh, that I thought we were, you know, from where we were. And so they've dialed back and now they're just able to focus on maybe some of the earlier stuff and, and, and see if uh, they can continue to improve. And then with the veteran guys, we just have to keep Keep plowing ahead, and then we'll give it, you know, give it to them again once we, once we get to uh, training camp. Uh, I mean, I think we do that, you know, based on really each and every week, each and every day, and uh, whatever we did three years ago is going to be different. There's going to be some similarities, and you know, it's the same with training camp and, and through the season. We see where the team is and kind of try to make a decision what's what's best for for them. Along those lines, the last few years, this time of year has been atypical. As you head into mini camp, are you able to remember just how valuable this time is for, for some of the younger guys and rookies to get ready to go? Well, I mean, I, I think it's critical for everybody. I mean, I think that uh, spending time with with your coaches and, and your teammates and, and doing stuff, I mean, we, we ran plays to yesterday and today that, that we've scored touchdowns on or defended in the season. You know, to say that those reps don't mean anything, I don't. I don't agree with that. You know, I showed the team numerous examples of stuff that we did in OTAs uh, that we used um, in the season. Mike, how excited are you to get the guys that haven't been here back next week and have the team whole as well? well I mean, I'm excited to coach everybody that comes, and I would imagine most of those guys will come that haven't been here. Um, just because they, they bring, you know, I mean, each of them brings something new and different and exciting and it, you know, I have relationships with them. And, um, you know, so it'll be, it's just, 
more guys add into to what we have here and, and the dynamic of, of building a team with different personalities and, and different people and different skill sets. Talking about Logan Woodside out there, what's he shown over the last four years to you know have you guys comfortable with him as far as running the system and understanding the way things operate? I mean, I think he just comes in, he competes, and the guys that we've had him compete against, he's outplayed them, outperformed them in training camp because, you know, his understanding of where to go with the football and, and the, the, you know, the audibles, the checks, all, all the different things that go into playing quarterback. Have you talked to Derrick Henry recently or touched base with him about how he's doing this offseason? No, I just usually just check on Instagram. I don't check them on Instagram. That was, it was a joke, Emily. What kind of makes your, your mind up, Ben? You know, some, some vets are here, some vets aren't here. You certainly plenty of years in the league. What, what makes you feel like it's important for you to, to, to be here during the volunteer year? Yeah, um, everybody's off season is different. Um, I feel like this prepares me for the season and my success as a, a pro. Um, I feel like I need this. It makes me a better player. And as a leader, um, I like being here. I like being around my teammates. And as an offensive lineman, I like working with guys. And this is the time I can work with multiple guys because you never know who's going to be beside you. And I want to have as many bank reps as possible for the guy on the right or left of me. What's it like as a unit? Because it's not the first time you've been through you know, change or right. up front. I mean, what's it like as you guys kind of get to know each other and see who, who wins jobs that are open? Right. Um, it's, it's always an exciting time. You see guys compete. You see guys step up. And you want to see guys succeed in this lead. Um, being in this league 11 years, I'm, I've played by a lot of different guys, uh, a lot of different guys throughout the years in each each season. It's not just five guys you play beside each other all year. You'll see multiple different combinations in games throughout the season. So it's exciting for guys getting their opportunities and whatever I can do. We go out there and uh, as an offensive line, we're trying to be one unit and try to protect and run the ball. At this point, have something new to learn or is it just refining all the stuff you've already learned? Yeah, you learn every day. I come in here with a clear mind, and I take notes just like a rookie. So no matter what, it's always something I can learn. If it's a different motion, if it's a different thing, I'm always trying to pick up on something because it's the offense and the NFL and the defenses, they don't stop. They're always trying to get an advantage. So as, my, as an offensive lineman, as a center, I'm trying to take one step each year. What's your interaction like with, with the rookies, whether it's Malik or right. Praylin or Hassan, as you try to get them up to speed and, and learn them? Right, um, they have rookie um, classes after this, so my role was to go in there and talk about routine. Um, I'm a very routine guy. I'm here every day, even in the off season. I'm here from eight to twelve every day in the off season, um, no matter if it's January, February, March. I I'm a guy of built of routine, and I think that's where my career stands. I'm, I try to be the most consistent guy and be out there every day and be available. And that's why I tell them, I was like, hey, find a routine that works for you and stick to it. Um, don't be wishy-washy on it and. Once you build something, you figure out it works, stick to it. Aaron Brewer, not necessarily the biggest guy out there on the line, but um, what, do you, what do you like about him in terms of, you know, battle skills, competitive, right. whatever, that, that has him in the mix, you know, competing? Right, he, he competes. Um, he's a guy who plays with effort, and that's what we we're, uh, try to be a tough physical team that plays hard, and he has all those characteristics. And he's a guy that uh, I've played a lot of ball beside him in the game. He stepped in and played a lot of good football for us, and he's a guy I'm confident to play him aside. The last two playoff games hasn't performed like we're all used to seeing Derek perform. Right. How personally do you guys take that on the offensive line? All right. Um, yeah, we got to go out there and execute. Um, teams know that Derek Henry is good, and it's that kind of ball, and they know that's their first thing is stopping the run. And we got to be better. We got to execute. We got to take that next step to get him get him in his groove earlier in games, but so we can put him in those situations. When you get a when you get a lead, you're able to run the ball more efficient. You get behind like we did last year. We're playing catch up and having to pick and choose when we run the ball. David, how important has it been for you to be out here during these OTAs to, you know, besides getting every rep you can get, uh, you know, show some leadership taking over that spot right now? Uh, it's very important. Uh, I think this time right here is where we build, you know, relationships, especially like with the rookies or any new guys we've picked up. Um, you know, this is the ground right here. Uh, we know the rookies come in and learn about what we're about, and I'm here, I've been here, so, you know, I can give my few pointers that I have. Um, but right now, just stacking the days, you know, getting better each day. What's, uh, what's it been like with making a transition uh, to a new position coach, and what do you, what do you think about Coach King? And coach what's King? He preaching? Yeah, what's he preaching? Uh, he's preaching, like, he just stands on this very uh, into it. He wants to be out there just as much as we do. Um, so it's good to have that energy around us. 
Um, he lets us, you know, play ball. Um, he's pretty cool to coach. I mean, not coach, but pretty cool to have as a coach. Um, he just is like one of us. You know, he's out there. Um, young guys still, you know, uh, finding his way. You know, he's new as well. Um, so, you know, it's all around, you know, learning each other and, you know, keep growing as one. You said it's important to build relationships right now. Why right. is it more important now as opposed to later in training camp? Um, because we have room to, you know, make mistakes. We have room to, you know, and, and room to learn. So when it gets closer to the season, it's kind of like it's on edge. You know, you can't, you don't got room to mess up too many times. Um, so right now we can have those those times we can you know make new mistakes. That's a, that's a saying here. Make new mistakes um, and just you know keep building and stacking the days. What's it like trying to improve on the little things after you've kind of established yourself as opposed to first coming in here, learning everything on the fly? Well, now it's like I know I know a lot. It's more about like fine tuning the things and like fundamentals and what else can I like involve in my craft, whether it's spinning on blitzes or whatever, you know, that may be. Uh, just finding ways to get better and then finding ways, you know, rally my teammates, you know, to do the same thing. David, you mentioned how you're, you're trying to be more vocal. I, I guess is that in your nature or is that kind of a, a role you're, you're trying to kind of come into it and learn um, kind of along the way, kind of your voice in that room? Now? That's that's the thing. It's really not my nature. Like, as far as talking goes, I'm more on the quiet side. But you can't be quiet on the field especially as a linebacker, as a leader on the defense, you know, quarterback on the defense. So that's a that's a step in my game I'm trying to, you know, improve, man. Whether it's on the sideline talking to the rookies or it's out on the field, knowing what everybody's job is and being able to communicate that. Impressions. Size, like, you may be considered undersized, but, like, you're one of those strikers on the field. Like, what's the mindset or the approach? Like, how did you develop that? Aggressive nature that you play. With. Uh, I mean, I, I've heard, I've been hearing the, the undersized stuff since high school, uh, but it never, you know, changed the way I play. It really just revved me up for real, as far as like that dog mentality, and as far as like I'm gonna show you, as far as like you know how big or how little you think I am. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's just been me, and that's just been growing a part of my game. You know, high school, college. You know, hearing the same thing, and even in g going into the league. You know, sixth round. You know, after becoming a defense player of the year, it wasn't no knock on my talent. It was height, you know what I'm saying, or size. So, you know, just continuing to showing that, you know, that doesn't mean a thing. The impact, though, I mean, obviously you made, right. You say you get better each year. Right. What are the areas you're sitting there right now saying, man, if I could just do a little bit more of this, how can you take your game to the next level? I think everything. Like, like I said, I'm coming into now as far as communication, being more of a leader out on the field, um, whether it's blitzing or coverage or the way – he likes to, he likes his linebackers to drop, but like I said, he like he likes us to play our game. I'm a, I drop a different way than he might have coached years before. You know what I'm saying? But that's cool because you know I play ball at the end of the day. But like I said, he's a good coach and he he's helping me become a better player. Any early impressions, David, on, on Chance Campbell and how he's coming along? He's coming a long way. Him and Gibby, they're asking questions, very involved, very smart rookies. Um, but they're they're here working. Um, Fun, fun to be around. Uh, just coming in here to learn. You can see that they're eager to learn, eager to get out there and you know get some reps. You have a football camp this weekend. Yes. First one you ever had. Second, what? second. I hosted with um, with Mike Edwards. He plays for the uh, Bucks. We went to high school together um, at Whitton Woods. Yeah. So we have this is our second annual uh, free camp for the kids, six to thirteen. Um, it's gonna be. It's way bigger this time because I, I took the initiative to get some sponsors uh, late, not late uh, this year. So. Pretty good, pretty big turnout this year. Hopefully, Your hometown of Cincinnati is that right? Yes, sir. What, what's that like? Did you go to camps as a kid? And what's it like now to be hosting one? And what do you kind of want to get? What point you want to get across to the kids? Um, it's it's crazy that I'm I'm, I'm holding hold my own camp back at home. Um, but I did go to a lot of camps. Uh, not like local camps. I went to like Ohio State and stuff. No, they didn't offer me, but it's cool. Um, but. Uh, it's so it's so good to have that that platform that I can reach kids that come from the, the same type of area, the same type of background, the same type you know things that I wanted as a kid. I can be that you know that platform to, to you know to do that. I was talking with Mike. It was basically like just don't wait till it's too late you know to figure out what you want to do. Um, I think that's what happened a lot, like especially white high school I went to. Guys waited too long to figure out you know what they wanted to do. As far as football, was he going to take it serious? Was they all in? The guys, me, Mike, we were all in early, you know, 
freshman, eighth grade. So I think that's the, the point. I'm going to just try to, you know, stay on. Of course, I'm still developing what else I'm going to talk about. But yeah, off top, that that'll be it.